Hello, everyone. I think we are live. I believe we are live. Uh, so welcome to the State of Glam Wiki session and this uh, 2021 Wikimania. Uh, I think I can say for everyone here uh, from the speakers list that we are very happy to be here presenting to you today. Um, I am Giovanna Fontanella. I am the program officer for the Glam and Culture team and the Wikimedia Foundation. And I am just going to uh, make a quick introduction for this um, session and present the speakers. Um, but first of all, I just want to thank uh, Andrew Lee for um, organizing and putting the proposal for the session in the first place. Uh, he was not able to join our presentation today because he is very busy organizing a lot of Wikimania today and with a lot of other uh, sessions that he's presenting. And I really recommend watching his presentations as well. Um, and also, I, sorry, I shared my screen in the wrong way. I'm sorry. <laughs> and uh, just so everyone knows, we have an interpad and the page for the Wikimedia session, our Wikimedia session today is also filled with some slides and videos uh, for this presentation as well. So check it out uh, when you can, okay? And after me speaking right now, we will have an uh, introduction by Fiona Romeo, who is the um, Senior Manager for the Glam and Culture Team from the Wikimedia Foundation. And afterwards, we'll have a presentation by Dominic. He's uh, a long-time Wikimedian. He has been a Wikimedian residence in the National Archives and the Digital Public Library of America. And today, he's going to be talking a little bit about that. And afterwards, we'll have two videos, both by Wikimovement of Brazil user group. Uh, the first one by Azer Porto, who is the uh, uh, project and researchers of the user group. And he will be talking about the technical developments and challenges in Glam Week initiatives. And afterwards, we'll have a video by Erika Zellini, who is the communication manager for the user group. And she will be talking about Week Love is Bahia. Uh, after that, we have Shiobhan Lichman uh, presentation. Uh, she uh, is in charge of or co-organizing the Wikimedians in Wellington and the Airota uh, New Zealand online meetups. Uh, and today she's, being, she's going to be talking about the Glam Wiki uh, initiatives and New Zealand. And after that, we'll have a presentation by Susanna Nance. Uh, she's a Glam coordinator and on Wikimedia Finland and Avoid Glam. And she's going to present a uh, Glam Manifesto today. And to finish up, we'll have a presentation by Fiona Romeo again to close the session uh, with an update from the Glam Culture team at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, after each presentation, some uh, speakers will be available to answer your questions if you have any. And by the end of the session, we'll have a few minutes to questions and answers as well. Our session today is 90 minutes, so um, please enjoy. And uh, now, please, uh, Fiona, welcome, uh, if you can present now. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that introduction, uh, Giovanna. Uh, I have some slides, but they're not necessary if, if we can't see them right now. Okay, uh, so I just wanted to really briefly kick off with a, to define a term for anyone who is new to it. So we talk about uh, GLAM wiki here. I'm sure you understand the wiki part. Uh, GLAM stands for galleries, libraries, archives, and museums. Um, and it's an acronym that centers institutional partnerships. Such partnerships have been incredibly valuable to our movement. They have brought in millions of high quality evocative images for use across our projects. And images from these cultural partners don't just illustrate articles about culture, they are used to illustrate a wide range of Wikipedia articles such as biographies, historic events, and broader concepts. Our collaborations with professional networks of librarians to add sources via the twice annual One Lib One Ref campaign is improving the reliability of Wikipedia articles. And increasingly, we see libraries, museums and archives connecting their specialised knowledge to Wikimedia's common knowledge via Wikidata, putting that platform at the centre of linked open data for cultural heritage. 
But libraries and cultural institutions are just one type of actor within the wider culture and heritage field. Institutions have their own gaps and biases, which they are increasingly acknowledging. They therefore offer an incomplete picture of culture and heritage. A more inclusive view includes photo competitions like Wiki Loves Monuments and Wiki Loves Folklore, a recent project to add Nigerian festivals to Wikidata, and videos documenting indigenous languages. So to get the complete picture of the state of Glam Wiki in 2021, we encourage you to attend or catch up on the other Wikimania sessions about culture and heritage. Here are just some of them. This list is also available with links in the etherpad for this session. Thank you. I would now like to hand over to our first speaker, Dominic. Thank you. I'm just getting my screen sharing set up. Hopefully you're all seeing that. Um, so yeah, as, as Giovanna said, um, I'm uh, at the Digital Public Library of America. Um, I've been a, a data fellow um, at DPLA since the start of uh, 2019. Um, and once my slides get started, I want to just start out by um, explaining uh, what that is. <laughs> I have, it's just spinning for me. Um, but uh, I'll just get started. Um, so uh, DPLA is, uh, essentially a uh, national aggregator for uh, cultural heritage metadata in the United States. Uh, here we go. Um, DPLA uh, consists of um, about 44 and a half million metadata records currently. Um, and it uh, uh, brings together 48 regional uh, or content hubs, um, which um, uh, which covers 4,000 institutions in the United States. So the way DPLA works um, is that it's not just all these thousands of institutions contributing directly um, to DPLA, but that there's uh, lots of intermediary, smaller aggregators um, that feed into DPLA. Um, so what it is in practice um, is actually a lot of different things. Um, it's a search portal on the web. You can go to dp.la and search. Um, it's an API that provides access to all of the metadata. Um, there's also curated content online exhibitions. Uh, DPLA also runs an ebooks exchange um, in the United States for um, uh, public libraries. Um, and uh, DPLA has its annual conference, DPLA Fest, and just generally runs a lot of, kind of convenings of the, the library and cultural heritage profession in the United States. Um, Another thing that's kind of harder to define, um, and good luck translating this, but uh, it's a I we call it kind of a digital library skunk works, um, which is to say it's kind of a, a experimental lab um, for innovation in the library space and does a lot of uh, kind of projects like that. Um, what DPLA is not, just to be clear, um, it's not something that has really like centralized control over all these institutions. All the hubs do things in their own way. DPLA is not a government agency, and it's not, even though it has members like the Smithsonian or the National Archives in the United States, it's not a, a large organization. It's actually uh, currently a staff of nine, including me, um, which is to say it's not, it's compared a lot to Europeana, if you're familiar with Europeana, but it's really not, um, it's not comparable in a lot of ways. Um, so uh, the project I want to talk about um, began in, in uh, uh, the end of 2019. And uh, the kind of big idea is um, we wanted to develop a single pipeline for media files to Wikimedia Commons 
and Wikipedia. Um, and when we talk about a single pipeline, we mean for all of uh, cultural heritage in the United States. Um, so it's solving, it's um, addressing that problem of um, every institution that wants to contribute to Wikimedia Commons, especially in bulk um, with their uh, digitized materials, uh, needs to figure out kind of the, the both um, technical um, way of doing that and how to, um, you know, edit. So this proposal actually grew out of the Structured Data on Commons project in a way because um, it's funded by the same uh, organization, the Sloan Foundation. Um, Catherine Marr uh, was or is still on the DPLA board. Um, and so all the people were kind of in the room at the same time. And the goal is, uh, in large part was also to have a large um, cultural institution contributing uh, media to Wikimedia Commons um, in order to um, help provide uh, sort of like the impact of what had been developed with the Structured Data on Commons project. Um, so one full-time Wikipedian, That's Me, was funded by the project um, and it's supported, uh, the, my work is also supported by the DPLA tech team. Um, so three main goals, um, one is, uh, to for the our members our participating institutions to increase access to their their images their records um and then also for dpla uh, you know there is no national chapter wikimedia chapter in the united states so for for dpla actually it's kind of stepping in and providing a support structure to cultural institutions um because they don't have anyone else uh really to go to outside of um you know dc and new york and um, and then of course the other goal, um, important goal, is actually improving the quality um, or coverage um, within Wikimedia content. Um, so technical de uh, details, what what we've developed. Um, this is kind of the workflow. Um, first step is just you know institutions on their own digitize and describe their objects, and they have to meet a certain uh, certain data requirements in order to participate in the Wikimedia project. Um, you know, that means they, they're only eligible items that are, uh, you know, open access and that they've um, properly marked the copyright and things like that are going to be uploaded. So DPLA harvests the metadata from its partners um, and kind of does its, its normal enrichment to aggregate um, this metadata. Um, and then from there, uh, we, we run a bot, DPLA bot, um, written with PyWikiBot um, and um, files from um, institutions that are participating um, and are eligible are uploaded to Wikimedia Commons. Um, and then the last step is that DPLA actually offers the um, training to all staff whose um, files are uploaded to Wikimedia Commons and how to edit Wikipedia and um, is providing them support and encouragement to um, on their own do the editorial work of putting images in articles. Um, so that's in a nutshell. This is what it looks like. Here's an example. One of our partners, the Boston Public Library. Um, this is a category on Wikimedia Commons. Um, and of course, the end, the biggest um, end goal is for images from these institutions to make them uh, into uh, Wikipedia articles. So here's an example. Our, uh, so far, we have uh, 10 different partners contributing. Um, and uh, they're from all over the country. Uh, so Georgia, Ohio, uh, Digital Commonwealth means Massachusetts, North Carolina, um, and then also the National Archives being uh, uh, national in scope. Um, so some of our outcomes so far, um, we've uploaded 2.4 million files to Wikimedia Commons um, since uh, the start of 2020. Uh, so that's the largest uh, contribution to Wikimedia Commons by any single entity. Um, actually, I think uh, we uh, became the largest around a million uploads, uh, and we've doubled it since then. Um, so we, what we've done is really show uh, the possible um, success at a large scale that um, especially an aggregator like DPLA can have. Um, uh, those uploads have seen 45 million page views in that time, and we have images in over 2,000 pages across all the Wikimedia projects. Um, 
those 10 hubs, I should say, represent 250 institutions. Um, I've, in the last year and a half, done more than 50 different outreach and training meetings um, with cultural institutions um, or groups around the country. We've had, um, I participated in um, five webinars um, with over 800 attendees. Uh, and also we've seen a lot of um, benefits in terms of uh, just um, kind of uh, side effects to the quality um, or coverage of um, DPLA's um, data in general. So over 20 million um, items in DPLA um, have had additional write statements added to them um, that didn't before um, be in order to participate in, the, um, in our project. Um, and 25 million, uh, which is more than half um, of DPLA's uh, items, um, have had their institutions provide media URLs for the first time. Um, again, uh, we've, we've had a lot of um, improvements uh, to our data quality um, because participating in Wikimedia and having this impact is also a good incentive for our institutions to work on, their, on um, remediating or improving their metadata. Um, so what, what, is it, what does this project look like now? Um, our funding um, wrapped up in 2020 from the Sloan Foundation. Um, the uh, project is not over yet. Um, in fact, we, we see this now as a core uh, service that DPLA is offering to its members. Um, so the DPLA tech team is um, continuing to operate this pipeline to Wikimedia Commons um, and continuously uploads uh, new materials um, you know, as new partners join um, or partners contribute um, new content. So um, the institutions in the United States can continue to come to DPLA um, and join this project and contribute uh, um, materials to Wikimedia Commons through DPLA. Um, and also for, uh, especially for partners or for institutions that are not yet part of DPLA, um, you know, we see it as that DPLA is the on-ramp for any institution to get into Wikimedia Commons um, in a way that's, uh, you know, easier and more accessible um, than what existed before. So uh, we see DPLA as kind of the, the on-ramp for, for those institutions um, that are interested in, in um, how, how to join Wikimedia. Um, just connecting with DPLA is their best way. Um, the, uh, and another um, um, future project or currently ongoing project now is DPLA is also currently being funded by the Wikimedia Foundation for a project specifically focusing on um, structured data on commons and um, data synchronization. So we're gonna be um, with our two and a half million and um, increasing number of uploads, we're going to be uh, uh, adding and maintaining um, many millions more of structured data statements to all of these. And, um, and we've already begun doing a lot of work on that. Um, and uh, as I said, the funding from the Sloan Foundation ended in um, at the end of 2020, but we are continuing to seek more long-term um, funding for the program. Um, so I'll wrap up there. Um, we do have a landing page on DPLA, uh, on uh, DPLA's website. Uh, if you um, want to learn more or contact us, um, and then also our, if you want to see our category on Wikimedia Commons of all of the, um, the things we've uploaded, it's just called Media Contributed by the Digital Public Library of America. So thank you. Uh, Dominic, we have some questions in the chat here, um, if you want to have a look at them. Sure, yeah. Um, so can we request the bot to upload specific images? Um, yes and no. Um, so right now, um, every uh, partner so far that's participated, um, uh, we've uploaded everything that's eligible. Um, from that institution. 
uh, aside from the National Archives, which has essentially an infinite amount of content. <laughs> so we can't do that in one batch. Um, so the main thing is if, if an institution, so institutions have to opt in, we're not uploading everything from every institution in DPLA. Um, so that, that's the, um, what causes something to be uploaded. If an institution wants to participate, then um, everything that's eligible from that institution can become uploaded. Um, and we're working to, to do outreach to our members and get buy-in, um, but we're also happy if anyone uh, works with an institution or knows an institution if they want to connect them with us and we can go from there too. Um, another question, how do you get the pictures categorized and described? Um, <laughs> good question. Um, so we are currently, um, you know, we're using the metadata that's been um, harvested from our partners. Um, and uh, in some ways there's a little bit of data loss there because we are an aggregator. Um, so we have access to essentially all of the common fields um, that are common across all of the institutions that they contribute. Um, so uh, the descriptions are, are not necessarily as full as um, they could be if an institution was doing it all themselves. Um, and the, the um, we're really not uploading topical categories um, right now. We're uploading categories uh, based on um, the image's source, the, um, the institution, because we haven't, there isn't really a good way to, to do that at the scale we're talking about and with the diverse amount of institutions. Um, so that is definitely a way that we are asking the Wikimedia community to help is if you're interested to help add topical categories to the uploads. Um, okay, am I, am I out of time? I'll let the next person go. I think we have one, one question left and I can answer that um, maybe by text somewhere. Thanks so much. Okay, now I will uh, present both uh, two videos, actually. Uh, the first one by Edo Porto from the uh, Wikimomento Brazil user group. He's the um, uh, researchers and project uh, of the user group, and I will just play it now. Hello, my name is Edo Porto. to throw some light at some topics we face in this partnership and hope that uh, it's useful for your partnerships as well. So for a bit of context, the partnership between Wikimovement Brasil and Museu de Piranga started in 2017 and as of today we have uploaded around 30,000 media files to Wikimedia Commons and have created uh, 30,000 items in Wikimedia. In 2020, we created a new project called the Wikipedia Initiative, Novo Museu de Piranga, which Wikipedia Initiative, New Piranga Museum. It's a project that we have been able to spread the new community of the technology culture and develop tools and processes to improve the insertion of the museum in the open internet technology, especially the Wikimedia environment. For that, established a sustainable digital community to act in production, circulation, outreach, and educational appropriation of content related to the institution's collections and research of the Also, we focused on innovation and development of products and technological processes broadly related to digital humanities and informational operation in the scientific web. I want to talk about what I think is the next step in every big Cloud Wiki partnership, that is data routing. In this diagram, each block represents a step in this uh, data routing process. The first branch of the process is when the institution donates their data and images to the Wikimedia projects usually by a long week partnership, doesn't need to follow this path 
But in our experience, in the projects that we held, this uh, seems to be the optimal benefit. What it was, and it still is a challenge, is how the information modified or added by the volunteers of the Wikimor community travels back into the original source. For that, we built this proposal in which we learned from other Wiki experiences, like the MET and the Swedish National Heritage Board, to guide the implementation of a methodology to, in fact, make the ground trip. The reason anyone would want to do this is pretty obvious. Wikimedians and Glen visitors can and do improve information they are interested about throughout editathons, wiki context, campaigns, workshops, and even organically. So in 2020 and 2021, we developed alongside with other activities in this project, a series of metadata applications called Wikimuseo de Piranga with the goal of provide a user-friendly interface to users improve the information provided by the museum. Not only that, but to help the research groups of the museum get answers for their questions. We had a few challenges that are divided into research problems related to defining the questions. And for that, we met several times with the research team uh, to discuss the applications into technical challenges, like to learn how to build an app on Forge. Thankfully, there are some tutorials available and the always present outreach. And for that, we tested the apps in some of our events and made adjustments accordingly. Today, we have six applications, each one varying in purpose, like adding trees in a photo, uh, describing clothes of people depicted in an artwork, uh, identifying the brands of objects of the collections, identify ornaments of those objects, uh, contribute images of similar objects, and describe its usage. And my personal favorite, identify heraldry uh, elements of coats of arms in the collection, in the objects of the collection. Thank you. Okay, so this was the first video. I'm um, sorry if you have um, sound problems. Um, we will share the link in the etherpad as well if someone wants to watch the video again with a better audio, okay? We have a second video now. It's by Erika Zellini. Uh, she's the communications manager for the Wikimomento Brazil user group. And I would just share it as well now. Just a second. I hope the audio will be better this time. Brazil, and I work very close. Hi everyone, hope you're having a good time at this Wikimania. We certainly have a lot to reflect on celebrating our community, and I'm grateful that this conference is allowing us to safely gather this year. My name is Erika Zellini, I serve as communications manager at Wikimovement Brazil and I work very closely with our community and all projects that we develop, including GLAM partnerships. And just adding to what Heather just presented to us, we can say that Wikimovement Brasil has reached a high level of international recognition in GLAM through our creative and innovative use of media platforms, especially when it comes to putting Wikidata at the center of our processes with institutions. Our golden case is definitely the partnership with the Paulista Museum, for which we develop integrated digital dissemination activities plus open technologies, as Edder just presented to us. And those technologies are quite pioneer. We are very proud of them, of course. And this digital dissemination leap 
of this particular museum that has been closed for almost 10 years now is what we would expect to approximate the general public and the institution in 2021, right? But I would like to highlight that this isn't the reality of most cultural institutions here. So although the Paulista Museum has a lot less resources than same level institutions across the global north, it is a very wealthy one in comparison to the average glam institution in Brazil. To briefly picture this scenario, according to a technological maturity research with museums under the federal jurisdiction, the majority scored very poorly when it comes to basic technical infrastructure, which is a parameter that includes internet access and collections digitization. And as we are here in State of Glam 2021 panel, I think it's important to highlight not only the realities that prevent many institutions from digitally joining Wikimedia, but also the efforts that are being done to make them visible online in this lower search context. So for us, it is crucial to face our local inequalities and start spreading resources throughout our territory to empower institutions and volunteers on sharing collections, especially considering that Brazil is a continental country with so much history and cultural diversity. So today, I'm proud to share with the community this bold initiative called Wikilove's Bahia that we are leading here in Brazil in order to address local content gaps and to reach out to cultural institutions in the margins of our country. Uh, Bahia is one of the largest and poorest states in Brazil, ranking in 22 out of 26 states in terms of human development indicators but it is very important culturally, historically, and socially. Uh, Bahia alone is bigger than Spain, and it is a territory of great natural and cultural diversity. It was actually the capital of Brazil at some point in our history, but it is a content desert on Wikimedia, which brings a lot of reflection on how we are dealing with the presence of our heritage on the internet. And for example, we noticed that there's a huge gap on how cities of Bahia are represented on Wikimedia Commons, since slightly less than half of the images there are depicting its capital called Salvador. The other half of the images mostly depicts touristic sites. Half of the cities have only less than five images there, and 25% of them don't have a single picture on Wikimedia Commons. It is alarming how invisible they are, even though they carry out such an important part of our culture. And that's why we started the Wikilabs Bio project. We want to address gaps in how this state is represented on Wikimedia while we engage local Wikimedians and cultural and educational institutions to act locally. And this is Brazil, a continental country and a considerable part of Wikimovement Brazil team is located in the southeast region, which is the rich part of the country. And Bahia is this huge state in the northeast part. And we understand that the land partnerships are key for adding local knowledge on Wikimedia. And earlier this year, we added on Wikidata all the land institutions in the state of Bahia. And you can see in this map that, yes, they exist and that they are spread throughout the entire state. And again, Bahia is larger than Spain. So you can imagine the wide diversity of landscapes and cultural manifestations in this area. So this all means that there's a lot of potential in this region for connecting with local institutions. And when addressing this region, we took it as a goal to diversify and empower GLAM partners so that to be in the community is not only for the large institutions, this is very important for us. And we tried to reach out to them, but we had a very low response rate. Let me also remind you that we are still living through a pandemic here in Brazil and that internet access in Bahia is not as widespread as in other states. Uh, for example, Bahia was the single state in Brazil that didn't have online classes in 2020 due to the lack of infrastructure. And the situation hasn't improved much since, 
which brings more challenges to our work that initially was planned to also engage students. So, what are we doing then? We develop a GLAM tutorial resource on outreach dashboard so that GLAM institutions in any contest are able to connect and contribute to the open GLAM community. As a Brazilian affiliate, we obviously want to support all GLAMs in Brazil, but at the same time, we have to figure out how not to make them dependent on us and spread capacity. And this GLAM tutorial includes three modules. One is an introduction to the Wikimedia ecosystem, so they are aware of its potential and what are our core values. Then they can learn how to set up a GLAM on Wiki, and finally, how to start uploading their collections there. And in this tutorial, we talk a lot about Wikidata and how to disseminate the collections on Wiki. We are also reaching out to cultural institutions and working on some partnerships. And at the start of the project, we run some very interesting queries to better understand the lack of content about Bahia on Wikimedia, which is very important to visualize specifically what kind of content is not there and what kind of gaps or biases are in what we already have in there. And this is key for planning how to engage people to improve that, which is linked to the other action point here. We are working on several dissemination activities to engage our local community on improving content about Bahia and also to bring new volunteer editors from Bahia and some institutions as well. We launched a contest on Wikipedia in which volunteers started to edit thousands of created entries on Wikipedia related to the Bahia state. Until now, they have contributed to more than 800 articles, and that's pretty impressive. And we are also running some online editathons in which we invite local specialists for webinars on the events team and offer a tutorial for participants, and then we jump to the editing activity. And we, we will also launch a photo contest so people can share images of their cities in the Bahia State. Um, here's a banner for the contest, highlighting one of the many cultural expressions in Bahia. And to wrap things up, I would say that we are just scratching the surface so far and that there's a lot of local challenges that we need to figure out. Um, our challenge here remains, how do we that are in a marginalized context can support regions that are even more marginalized in Brazil? But if by the end of the day, we can engage a few institutions and volunteers in Bahia to collaborate with Wikimedia and share their local heritage in this open GLAM ecosystem, all the struggle will be worth it. Any and every file and edit counts. So thank you all for watching this and I'm excited to join my colleagues for a discussion on the state of GLAM in 2021. Hey everyone, I see that there is one question here. So someone asked, how do you obtain reliable and verifiable references to back up your work on these communities? So we were working on a lot of dissemination activities and we always provide them tutorials on how to contribute to Wikipedia, to Wikipedia Commons, etc. So we always talk a lot about how do you insert reliable references in there? And we have a very active community uh, verifying their work in there. So, for example, on the wiki contest that we are doing on Wikipedia, uh, each contribution is verified by our committee that is working on this wiki contest. So, so the, the participants only obtain points in the contest if they are in line with Wikipedia uh, rules. So this is how we are doing that. Uh, there's one question for Eder here. Hello. <laughs> How do you manage the conflicts between the official versions of the history property in the works? I 
I don't know how to answer the question actually. <laughs> so I'll make um, a response and I'll uh, answer by text, I think, this, if that's okay. Yes, of course, I think it's a big question as well, so it's okay. So I would just ask for Shogun Lichman to uh, present now. She's going to be talking about the Glen Week initiatives in New Zealand. So uh, thank you, Shogun. Hi, thanks for having me. Hopefully you can hear me. I'm just going to... Everyone? Yep, great. Okay, lovely. Kia ora koutou, katoa. I'm Siobhan Leachman, also known as user Ambrosia 10. And this is this presentation is my personal view of the state of Glam Wiki in New Zealand. Now, I'm aiming to give a, a quick overview of the recent history of Glam engagement by the New Zealand Wikimedia community. And then I want to delve into how COVID has affected the Glam Wiki movement here. I'm aiming to outline some of the initiatives that have taken place and the progress that has been made both by Glams themselves and the editing community during the pandemic. And finally, I want to conclude with what I regard as the main challenges faced by the New Zealand editing community when engaging with GLAN. Now, New Zealand has a geographically dispersed editing community. Active editors are spread all over the country and historically tended to edit relatively independently. And as you can see from this list of meetups, New Zealand editors only really started gathering regularly from around 2018. And as will be explained later, these regular meetups have had a really positive effect on engagement with GLAM. But the initial project I want to talk to you about today helped really helped develop the, the GLAM Wiki movement in New Zealand. It was a Wikipedia project run by the Delft Art Museum in around 2015, and it was a year-long project initiated by the museum itself, aiming to improve the coverage of New Zealand craft artists in English Wikipedia. And I've put a link in the slides um, to a YouTube video explaining more about that project. It stars Courtney Johnson, the director of the DAO, uh, as she was then. She's now the CEO of Te Papa, our National Museum of New Zealand. And she presented this project to the National Digital Forum, and that's New Zealand's GLAM Digital Conference. Now, this project was really influential. It was the first time a New Zealand GLAM had undertaken a significant project with Wikipedia, and it had an additional benefit, as several of our current and most prolific editors, myself included, got their start or were really positively influenced by this project and its editors on. And of course, it also raised the awareness of all things um, Wiki in the GLAM sector. Now, the next big influence in the Glam Wiki movement in New Zealand was Mike Dickerson, user as Bill. He obtained funding from the Wikimedia Foundation for his Wikipedian at large role. He roamed New Zealand from July 2018 to June 2019, having residences at numerous Glam. He helped them start a variety of Wiki projects, and while doing so, really increased the number of Wiki editors joining our community. And one of the most impactful results of Mike's efforts is the, the editing community itself that began taking steps to form an active user group. And this user group was recognised by the Wikimedia Foundation in December of 2019. This really assisted GLAM engagement with editors. In 2020, the Auckland Museum commissioned Mike to produce the Auckland Museum Wikipedia Strategy. And this document was converted into a work plan that has enabled the Auckland Museum to take a strategic approach to its engagement with Wikipedia, Wikicommons, and Wikidata. And in conjunction with Auckland Museum's open by default, closed by exception, reuse policy, this has resulted in the Auckland Museum, in my eyes, becoming the leader of the New Zealand GLAM sector, modelling how to engage with the Wiki community. Auckland Museum shares its documentation openly and also reports back to the wider GLAM community on its efforts. And this supports the other GLAMs in the other GLAM institutions in New Zealand to be bold and to engage with the Wiki community. Now, equally important are the changes that have actually taken place in the editing community here in New Zealand. The COVID-19 epidemic has had a significant influence on New Zealand's Wiki editing community. 
When New Zealand went into its first extensive Level 4 lockdown in March 2020, it happened really quickly. We went from relative normality to everyone staying at home in the space of about four days. Many people, including GLAM workers and volunteers, as well as Wikipedia editors themselves, all were working from home. And many folk had to learn to conduct their work lives remotely and online. Importantly for New Zealand, for the New Zealand Wiki community, this included learning how to use video communication platforms like Zoom and Jitsi. Now, in my opinion, the COVID pandemic and especially that first lockdown is one of, if not the best thing ever to happen to the Wiki movement in New Zealand. It forced a lot of people all at once to get digitally literate about working online and online meetings. It pushed many GLAMs to consider how their employees and volunteers could use digital platforms, including wiki projects, as a way to contribute while at home. An example of this is that the National Library of New Zealand encouraged its staff and volunteers to assist with the Alexander Turnbull Library mix and match data set in Wikidata. Now, the lockdown also had the effect of pushing physical, um, the physical Wellington Wikipedia meetup organised by my sister Victoria and myself online. And because we were the only New Zealand wiki group holding online meetings during lockdown, we were really open and inclusive about who could attend. As a result, folk from all over New Zealand, not just Wellington, and also folk from Australia regularly attended our online meetings. The online meetings themselves had a flow-on effect because in August of 2020, the community were forced to gain skills in how to run virtual editathons. The relationships built during those online meetings played a part in ensuring that the virtual editathons themselves were successful. Uh, as an example, user Paikori organised the Play Market Editathon to improve wiki coverage of New Zealand play roles. She and a playwright employee were at the institution's library, providing assistance and research content to remote editors. She ran a really successful editathon at a time when physical attendance was prohibited. And this success gave user Paikori and the confidence to apply for Wiki, Wiki Foundation funding for her performing arts project. Now the online meetups were so popular that they continued after we came out of lockdown. So Victoria and I created a once a month Aotearoa New Zealand online meetup. And this has helped ensure that the momentum gained by the community when forming the Aotearoa New Zealand user group has continued. It gave us a core group of folk that to help engage with GLAM and that could be importantly could be contacted by GLAM wanting to explore the potential of wiki engagement. And the attendance of our Australian colleagues in this virtual space has unsurprisingly resulted in more collaboration between Australian and New Zealand editors. It helped create a bigger pool of experienced editors to assist with online editathons. We also started collaborations on campaigns. For example, Wikimedia Australia and the New Zealand Aotearoa Wikimedia User Group jointly ran a, a successful series of online drop-in sessions for the recent One Lib One Ref campaign. Online meetings have also helped New Zealand, the New Zealand user group, organise three in-person wiki conferences this year. The second event in particular was glam focused because it was hosted at the Auckland Museum and attended by several of their staff, as well as staff from the National Library of New Zealand and the Auckland Art Gallery. As the editing community grew and gained confidence, also the number of editors prepared to undertake outreach activities with GLAM also grew. So for example, user Dr. Sneed ran a three hour introductory workshop on Wikidata for the humanities librarians at Otago University. And user Muriel Mary not only helped run the Christchurch in-person Wiki meetup, she organized the Christchurch Art Gallery Art and Feminism Editathon. GLAMs were also showing signs of engaging with the wiki movement independent of the local editing community. For example, Te Papa, our national museum, is trialling a basic form of round-tripping data on their online cataloguing system. They're adding links to the appropriate wiki data item or the appropriate Wikipedia article. But there are still ongoing challenges. 
One of the main ones for Glam Wiki here in New Zealand is increasing the number of editors contributing to the movement. There is just so much to do and not enough ed editors. Growing the editing community in the virtual environment is challenging. However, we've been really fortunate in New Zealand. As for the majority of 2020, 2021, we've been able to hold in-person events. As a community, we've also been looking for opportunities to upskill um, uh, experienced editors. For example, my sister Victoria organised an extremely successful carpentry's workshop on open refine. Several active wiki editors attended and have been using this tool for their wiki data editing ever since. We also need to improve the knowledge and understanding within New Zealand GLAMs about the various wiki projects. There's still a need to educate GLAM employees on how our projects interrelate and how our community works. One of the ways we're attempting to address this is by attending the in-person GLAM conferences. User Muriel Mary has put in a proposal to present at the 2021 National Digital Forum. Um, that's the New Zealand GLAM Digital Conference. And she'll be explaining how the wiki community here engages with different GLAMs and also with GLAM content. But despite these ongoing challenges, and in conclusion, I really believe that the wiki, GLAM wiki movement here in New Zealand has never been better. And I look forward to seeing what happens next. Thank you. Thank you, Shoban. Um, I just want to ask Susanna to present next, next if it's possible. Susanna, have you shared your screen already? Thank you. So welcome to the presentation. Thank you. I will um, first find my slides. So um, I'm going to present my uh, little uh, um, ideas in a, as a little uh, manifesto. I'm Susanna Ones from uh, Avoin Glam, Finland, uh, and uh, I'm going to talk about our recent activities. Um, in my, my little manifesto that you saw in the previous slide already, uh, the first thesis is to encourage exploratory collaboration between all actors involved in making cultural heritage openly accessible. GlamWiki has traditionally been concerned with making open data and content held by an organization available on Wikimedia projects. OpenGlam has focused more broadly on questions of accessibility and advocacy. For some of you not familiar with OpenGlam, it started out as a network of activists and GLAM professionals pro uh, promoting open access to cultural heritage some 10 years back, coordinated by the Open Knowledge Foundation. Creative Commons picked up the torch a few years ago and started the Open Glam platform and runs a five-year Open Glam project from this year on. I myself, I work uh, at Wikimedia Finland, where we have set up a collaborative group between Open Knowledge Finland, Creative Commons Finland and Wikimedia Finland on Glam activities as Avoin Glam. Avoin Glam has worked to open up uh, cultural heritage in Finland since 2012, and this was a way to combine the efforts in a small country. We hope this can become a good model for joining forces in promoting open access to cultural her heritage and Wikimedia projects as a vehicle of a digital transformation for cultural heritage institutions and projects. So uh, currently we work on an uh, international hack for open glam cultural heritage hackathon, which is also a way to advance these goals. The event takes place from 20 to 24 September at the Creative Commons Global Summit. It invites glams, communities, creators of digital media, activists and volunteers, as well as tool and platform creators to work together. There will be a session about it on Monday. Please join. An important part of this um, ethos of Hack for Open Glam is to bring the capabilities of coding to non-developers. Non Glams and the Wikimedians working with them uh, could more actively participate in contributing to the open ecosystem if the tools were easier to use, more accessible and modifiable for each use case. 
In the last Wikidata hackathon, a group of Wikimedians contributed to the pause in vi uh, ecosystem on Wikimedia cloud services, which, for example, made OpenRefine available to use online for anyone with a Wikimedia account. Secondly, I want to repeat that the majority of the world's knowledge is outside Wikimedia projects. Wikimedia platforms are valuable for making cultural, her cultural heritage projects sustainable and connected. There are challenges, however, in including the sum of all human knowledge into Wikimedia projects. Knowledge equity is the overarching theme of Hack for Open Glam as well. The projects are highlighting gaps in participation and in representation of individuals, communities, and cultures. We also encourage and invite projects that address decolonization, especially of GLAM collections. And um, as a reference to um, pro projects that we did this year, Avon GLAM has organized online discussions. Uh, and in February, we talked about cultural restitution with Mautam Posup and Favas Tairu from Mukimedia and Benin, Andrea Wallace from the University of Exeter, Brigitte Vesna from Creative Commons, and Heiki Kastema from Wikimedia Finland. The modalities of the sources and content also lead to gaps. Oral knowledge is a well-recognized black hole in Wikimedia projects. Unpublished sources cover many less well-known topics. Obsolete technology leads to unaccessible cultural heritage, and even then, the materials need to be di digitized. Copyright and the lack of open licensing narrows down further what can be published. This image here is from Alexandri Aholavalo collection, a topic of one of uh, Avon Glam discussions earlier this year. They wish to open the collection of this less known Finnish artist using Wikimedia projects, but the archive processes need to be solved as well. And finally, if a small heritage project overcomes all these difficulties, it faces the barrier of Wikimedia conventions of notability and no original research. The other option is to go around some of the limitations and connect to the external resources uh, of um, the other option is to go around uh, some of the limitations and connect to the external resources instead of including their information into the Wikimedia project projects. Ideally, we can configure different platforms to read from and feed into the Wikimedia infosphere and to allow the projects to define their own scope and barriers. Wikibase has been chosen by several archival projects as a platform for storing information and producing linked data from it. It will be interesting to communicate between such projects, align data models, features, and functionalities in order to connect between them and Wikimedia. Also, other low threshold archive solutions, as well as projects without one, are seeking collaboration at Hack for Open Glam. This image here uh, shows the Wiki Documentaries project displaying the topic of the Dagbani language in the in Dagbani language. And actually, for those, uh, for your information, Dagbani language is a very, very fresh uh, Wikipedia. And my final thesis is that we need to change in order for the majority of the information to enter the wiki sphere. Contributors from, from underrepresented communities face difficulties on Wikimedia projects. Their contributions are not valued and their knowledge is not compatible. It will be important to ensure that underrepresented communities can create value for themselves by contributing to the projects. Wikimedia must not perpetuate colonial practices in extracting information from the communities. While encouraging underrepresented communities to contribute, we must, cr must craft practices to protect that information from exploitation. Being open is not the only value. We must look at the whole picture. Thank you. Thank you, Susanna, for such an enlightened uh, presentation. Um, I think it's very important what you said right now. And um, thank you for that. And Fiona, if you can start. 
Thank you. Yes, thank you. So hello again, I'm Fiona Romeo and I'm part of the Glam and Culture team, a small and relatively new team within the product department at the Wikimedia Foundation. I work alongside Sadeep Gill and Giovanna Fontanelli, who has been hosting this session today. Uh, the Glam and Culture program aims to grow and sustain participation in the Wikimedia movement by Glam institutions, professionals and volunteers in order to share high quality content, address knowledge gaps, reach new readers and grow the contributor base. So as I said in my introduction to the Glam Wiki session as a whole, the movement's partnerships with libraries and cultural institutions have brought in millions of high quality evocative images for use across our projects. We estimate that content partnerships with these institutions combined with the Wiki Loves photo competitions would account for at least 10% of the total images on Wikimedia Commons. And these images don't just illustrate articles about culture as valuable as that would be in itself, they are used to illustrate a range of topics in Wikipedia, such as biographies, historic events, political figures, cities, films, scientists, musical instruments, mythology, and even broader concepts like love or play. We know that well captioned and relevant images actually improve the readability and scannability of Wikipedia articles. And they can also be used to address content gaps and underrepresentation on our platforms. From the other side, by contributing to Wikimedia projects, cultural institutions or GLAMs reach a vast global audience. The graph on this slide was produced by the Metropolitan Museum of Art to compare views of collection pages on their own website with those on Wikipedia articles in all languages. Um, in most cases, they were achieving more views um, for the images that had been incorporated in Wikipedia. But it's actually not only large museums like the Met that have international brands that can achieve this visibility. Each month, a few hundred image files that were contributed by the Museum of Veterinary Anatomy in Sao Paulo attract millions of page views. And when the Smithsonian Institution shared images of women as part of their American Women's History Initiative, they found that some of the most viewed images were of women of color, such as Sojourner Truth, a Chippewa widow, and Josephine Baker. And so here you see that there really is an appetite for content that addresses gaps and, and underrepresentation on our projects. Wikimedia projects also importantly for those institutions put glam images and information into new contexts, making it relevant and accessible to people who aren't specialist researchers or even museum goers. Glam content on our projects is used to meet the everyday information needs of people, accessing uh, the information on Wikipedia, in search engines, and increasingly via voice assistance. One of the most inspiring GLAM projects this year was the digitization of more than 3,000 palm leaf manuscripts to preserve Bali's culture and literary heritage, but also to revive the Balinese script online, leading to a new language wiki source. But high quality images contributed to commons aren't always easy to find and reuse. One of our big partners recently shared that actually fewer than 5% of the images they've contributed to the commons have been reused on Wikipedia. Now they still see a huge increase in global reach and views just from that 5%, but it shows that there is a lot of unrealized potential, images that are yet to be used. And we know that our communities have had a similar realization. The Wikipedia Pages Wanting Photos campaign that I know many of you are aware of and have been involved in is really trying to address that challenge for images that have been contributed via the Wiki Loves campaigns. So over the next year, our team's emphasis is, is really shifting to the reuse of images. So of course we still want institutions open licensing their content, making big contributions to commons. But what we wanna focus on is how we make sure that the images that GLAMs contribute are actually easily discoverable and end up being reused on projects like Wikipedia. And I'm pleased to say that several product teams at the foundation are working hard to improve image discovery and reuse on Wikimedia projects. So two fairly recent releases, show the potential of these developments for libraries and cultural institutions. 
The first is the new media search on Wikimedia Commons, which was developed by the structured data across Wikimedia team. And the second is a proof of concept image suggestions API by the platform engineering team. So media search is an image focused interface that makes it easier to find what you're looking for on Wikimedia Commons. Most importantly, the search results are language agnostic. So given a search term like Zonnevelk, Dutch for sunspot, media search won't just return the one file on commons that uses that exact language, it will search Wikidata for relevant entities and then find all files with that term and any of its aliases or translations. For this example, the number of images returned increased from one file to more than 600 files. The Image Suggestion API is a service that will generate a list of unillustrated articles for any language version of Wikipedia and then suggest up to 10 images that can be placed in those articles. The API will eventually be powering a planned add an image structured task for newcomers on Wikipedia, but could also be used by our communities to drive image reuse campaigns, such as the Wikipedia pages wanting photos campaign that are already underway. The foundation is also launching some product pilots in the next fiscal year that will test new ways of attracting new contributors in underrepresented countries. One of the pilots will be a more image-led format for telling stories. But to make sure that more images are available for these product developments, we have to continue working with our GLAM partners and also with our communities to use structured data to describe images. Good image descriptions in the form of depicts and captions make images more discoverable by search and suggested image features and also make our projects more accessible to readers. Um, I was interested to see that when Dominic was presenting about DPLA earlier, there were a number of comments about how the content is being organized and how it's being described so that it actually can be found and, and used by communities. Uh, we've been doing some work to understand the state of image description practices now in the movement. We recently analyzed a sample of 3,000 alt text fields from the English language Wikipedia to see how often they were added and, and what sort of descriptions people were writing. And we found that actually only 10% had some form of alt text. So 10% of um, images on English language Wikipedia in our sample had some version of alt text, some text string that was made available there. Um, actually only 5% of the files had alt text that could be said to follow the Wikipedia manual of style. And 3% had alt text that I classified as good or, or good enough. Um, we have really strong signals that people want to know more about the images they see on Wikipedia pages. The foundation's own research team found that there is a 10 times interaction with images versus sources on articles. So the average page specific click through rate for an image in an article is 3%. So we know that people want to know more about the images that are there and that description will make them more discoverable. However, we also know from user research as part of the add an image task that newcomers actually find it really challenging to write good captions for images. Um, they're not necessarily presented with enough metadata or context about the image, or they don't have sort of confidence and experience of describing images. And actually, in a recent design research project looking at verifiability, our design research team interviewed 17 experienced Wikipedians in English, German, Korean, and Basque languages to understand what they needed to improve their article research. And one of their wishes, actually, was that we would have more standards for using images on Wikipedia. So even very experienced Wikipedians didn't feel so confident about how images should be worked with. So we clearly need more consistent image description practices to make our images more discoverable and accessible. So one of our big areas of focus over the next year is to work with GLAMs and affiliates to develop a new type of program that would support this image description. And actually museums and galleries are the perfect collaborators for this kind of work because they've been educating visitors in how to look at and describe images for hundreds of years. 
Finally, over the next year, we're going to be mentoring technical projects by Open Refine and DPLA that will enable institutions to independently upload image content at scale with the kind of structured data I've been talking about. So depicts and, and image descriptions as well. Um, and if you are interested in any of this, I would like to end this talk with an invitation for you to join us in another session later today, which will be led by Giovanna, where we will talk more about using structured data to make images more discoverable. So that session is structured data on commons today and tomorrow. And there's a link and further information about that in the etherpad. Thank you. Thank you, Fiona. Um, so we were very worried about the time for the session, actually, because we had a lot of speakers, but we end up finishing earlier. So we have time for questions and we have some questions that we didn't answer yet. Um, there is one for Susanna, if you want to start. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will read the question. Uh, many underrepresented communities have very few educated population and few publications on them. How do we accommodate such a group in Wikipedia? Thank you for the question. I think uh, this is a very important one. And first, maybe I would wrap it up by saying it's a long-term project. Uh, um, there, with working with uh, small communities, underrepresented communities, they do have very little, pe <clears throat> few people, and and uh, from my experience with the Sami community, they are all um, uh, they have ha have their hands full with uh, tasks that relate to their culture already, and finding the incentive to work with Wikimedia projects is not necessarily um, uh, evident. So um, I think there are several ways to go forward. And I think uh, just thinking about this long-term collaboration is the first and foremost. Uh, and then uh, be more engaged, uh, start working uh, collaboratively over a long time together with them so that the initiative eventually comes from them. And uh, also, I, I was thinking that, um, yeah, and also if you, there are way, things that you can do. You can do statistics or, um, or make the services of uh, Wikimedia better for them, make, make Wikimedia serve them better rather than try to get their data on Wikimedia projects. And um, um, well, but yes, and you, you may do more harm if you try to tamper with the culture. If you are, if you don't know the culture, you don't know the language. Uh, if you start um, working on that without the knowledge, without the insight of the culture, I don't think you should do it. So, so work slowly um, and uh, wait for the for the right things to happen. Yeah, my short answer. <laughs> Thanks. I think we have one question for Fiona and some uh, that Dominic hasn't uh, answered before because of the time issue. Uh, which one of you wants to answer now? I'm happy to jump in. Um, so there was a really good question here about the percentage of images from GLAMS that have ended up as featured pictures or similar. Um, I don't have that information. I think it would be a really interesting thing to find out. And actually, a similar question came up when the Wiki Loves Africa Im winning images were announced yesterday. Someone asked, do those winning images automatically become like featured pictures or quality images? And actually that doesn't necessarily happen in the campaign. So I think there is an interesting thing to think about there. We're also planning um, at some point over the next year to start having like looking into and having more conversations about the commoners who kind of curate commons. So looking 
at those categories, how those decisions are made, how the homepage is edited, and just understanding the sort of quality considerations that the community are sort of engaging in when they do that. Because I think it's something my team, you know, doesn't know enough about and we want to look into. So I think that's a super interesting question. Thank you. I can answer some of the questions too that I got. Um, just a, a quick one. There was a question about how, when I was explaining DPLA, how it how is a public library, not a government agency. Um, just to maybe clarify what I said quickly. Uh, so DPLA is essentially a consortium. Um, so it's a it's a nonprofit, non governmental organization, and has members from across the cultural heritage sector that are public libraries, academic institutions, museums, archives, um, so public and private nonprofit institutions. Um, and uh, yeah, like Fiona said, uh, a lot of the questions that I was getting were around um, how we describe and categorize in Wikimedia Commons, especially with the, at the scale that we're operating in. Um, and, you know, the honest answer is uh, it's not great. <laughs> um, and that's, and we know that's the biggest challenge. Um, and so essentially what we're dealing with is that, uh, you know, DPLA has aggregated metadata um, that's uh, millions of records from thousands of institutions. And like I said, it's not a very centralized um, organization. Um, you know, it's only a, a small staff and we are essentially at the mercy of the um, the hubs and the institutions that we are harvesting the data from uh, in terms of their data quality and standardization. Um, and in fact, the only sort of topical information that we have is there's a subject field in DPLA's data model, um, but it's not a controlled vocabulary. Um, so you can have uh, subjects that are the same, the same name from different institutions and there's no way that those are like, um, you know, given an identifier or controlled in some way so we can um, differentiate between them. Uh, so, um, and also a lot of institutions, uh, you know, may, a common archival practice is the title of the work is the original caption. And who knows if that actually has like the best, uh, you know, subject or term of what it depicts. Um, and that's just kind of what we are, the decision that we made is that we upload what we um, what we have and we wanted to, to begin by actually, uh, you know, being able to provide access to this content um, as quickly as possible and um, uh, build a pipeline. And now we're really in the phase where we're trying to iterate on what we've provided or continue to provide and improve the, the quality and discoverability. Um, so like Fiona said, um, I, I'll be presenting on our uh, project in uh, the Structured Data on Commons um, presentation later if you're interested, but that's that's really one of our um, main efforts uh, that's ongoing right now to in improve our discoverability is we have these over 2 million uploads and, and growing um, that so far, you know, are not using linked data in any way or, or Structured Data on Commons. Um, or, or really top, topical categories. Um, and so we, uh, again, are trying to, to um, uh, use, uh, to apply structured data on common statements um, across all these millions of uploads to, to help make them more findable. Thank you, Dominic. Uh, I think Eder will try to answer that previous question now as well. Eder asked, it was a big question. Can you repeat as well? Because I think people... Yes. Uh, okay. Thank you. So the question was, how do you manage the conflict between the official versions of history propagated by the works of art at the Museo de, Museo de Piranga and the modern lecture of those events? For instance, apology of Banderantes and other kinds of national heroes, and the official version of the building of Brazil identity as seen 100 years ago. So my answer to this question, I think this question is very relevant in, in our time today, 
as we see around um, social media and the news. For example, um, the removal of uh, racist statues in United States. We also have those kind of uh, statues here in Brazil. Um, uh, earlier this month or last month, uh, a statue of a racist uh, Bandeirante. Bandeirante is uh, uh, a people, a person that um, uh, in early history of Brazil was responsible for the genocide for the the indigenous people in Brazil. Uh, <clears throat> so and discovery of the of the the territory. So this is a very good question. And for newcomers, it is important to co important to contextualize a bit. The Museu de Ipiranga was created as a history museum. I have a great part of its collection related to the independence of Brazil in the early 19th, 19th uh, century, and later to the history of the state of Sao Paulo, particularly focusing on its role in the construction of a Brazilian identity in the imaginarium of uh, its citizens. So uh, how do we manage that? Uh, one of our concerns in this partnership, with this partnership with Museu de Piranga is exactly how to approach the collection of the museum in a manner to show its diversity rather than praising only one aspect of it. And the main aspect is the, the beginner uh, thought the, uh, to praise the independence of Brazil and, and national figures and Paulista figures, people from Sao Paulo, uh, figures in its um, development. So that goes from choosing images that praise this, di this type of diversity in the communication uh, to promote the events that we do, we promoted last year and this year. I am responsible for the design of those posters. So I tried always to get um, uh, an image to show a Bandeirante uh, defeated in the field or a woman uh, soldier uh, and, and indigenous people. Uh, and that goes from the, the art of the posters of the events to the events themselves, like uh, promote events specifically focused on this uh, type of di diversity. For example, the editatons, the indigenous uh, in the museum, and the editaton fights for independence of Brazil that focused on the, the representation of uh, indigenous people in the artworks of the museum and in the, the the many uh, fights for the independence of Brazil rather than the independence uh, as a unique history in throughout all the country. I'll put links to this editatons on Remo later. Thank you. Thank you, Heather. Uh, this was such an important question. Thank you for answering it. Uh, Fiona, if you want to answer the uh, question that we have now, I think the person ar already changed it a little bit, uh, edit that question. I will um, post it here again for you to read it again, if you want to. Um, okay. Thank you. So there's a question here about whether the GLAM department at the Foundation is working on advocacy material to promote alliances with institutions, um, noting that it can be hard to engage local GLAM institutions in open access um, projects and chapters and volunteers don't necessarily have all the resources to respond to that. Um, yeah, so I think this is a really important question. One small thing we're planning imminently is a sort of section on the Wikimedia Foundation website, which is sort of institution facing, that basically outlines um, 
culture and, and heritage projects talks about ways that institutions can get involved and give some case studies. So that will just be something that people can be pointed to. But actually, I see some really interesting trends within the movement of um, people taking regional approaches to this question. So not approaching institutions one at a time, but working on more concerted outreach. So we saw that in the example from Brazil today with the sort of training and outreach to a particular region, Bahia. We see that Wikimedia Argentina developed a course um, for glam professionals and received over 500 signups. Um, CIS in India did a comprehensive mapping of the Maharashtra state, understanding what all the barriers to participation might be. So I think there's a lot of promise in kind of this regional approach where you're very aware of the local challenges, the local opportunities, you actually spend some time engaging with the professional network to understand what the barriers are, and then sort of produce materials that you can disseminate a little bit more broadly. So I think it would be good as a start to just learn more from those projects that have happened recently, um, to look at where good resources could be translated and shared. Um, but we are also always happy to sort of provide mentoring and support on those kind of big regional or national approaches as well. Um, while I have the mic, I just wanted to acknowledge that there was a comment in the chat on uh, Remo where someone pointed out that actually um, having 5% of the images contributed by a glam reused across Wikipedia is actually great. And yes, I agree. Like that represent, but especially because as, as this sort of commenter said, uh, I think it was James, they're not necessarily well categorized or described or set up for reuse. So I just want to agree that absolutely. And I'm sure cultural institutions that have been working with the movement for a long time understand and really appreciate all of the work that goes into doing that. So thank you for that sort of, correction, which I just wanted to amplify here. Thank you for that answer, Fiona. So I think, I believe that that was the last question, um, if I'm not mistaken. Let's see um, if some other question arises in this last few minutes. Uh, but before we go, I just want to uh, Give a shout out to Chauvin, who, who is here, uh, and she was presenting from uh, New Zealand, about New Zealand, actually, and she's in New Zealand, and she's uh, presenting here, she presented here very late for her, so I just wanted to thank her here live, because we thanked her at the chat as well, so thank you for that. And I think that's it. Um, yeah. I, I would just add, I plugged the structured data session that's happening later today. If other speakers here have a session, they would like to sort of give a shout out, go ahead. Rather than rather than writing, um, which my time might not be enough for, um, there will be uh, there will be a session, a quick lightning talk on Hack for Open Glam on Monday. Uh, well, you'll find it in the in the schedule. Thank you. And some members of Wiki Movement Brazil will be joining sessions around Wikidata. You know, we are very Wikidata nerds, so it's always a pleasure to share with the community what we've been doing with Wikidata. So feel free to join us in those sessions. We will be also joining an education table. I think that's tomorrow, and. In a, I think in about one hour, we will be talking about English as a lingua franca of the Wikimedia movement. So this should be an interesting one as well. Thank you. I'm looking forward to watching all of those sessions, actually. If I can manage to be there at the same time, because I'm doing some other presentation, I will catch up later. Uh, but thank you, everyone. Um, thank you for all your presentations. I hope everyone here enjoying presenting and enjoying hearing us. Um, thank you. Thank you.